If you happen to be unfamiliar with Gerbert, he is a sentient chicken nugget that hosted a Christian television program for human children from 1988 to 1991. And if he doesn't hurry up and move his car already, I'm gonna fucking lose it. Go, Gerbert, go! Come on, move! I didn't really think I'd spend so much of my adult life watching and reviewing children's television and movie programming, but... God works in mysterious ways, I guess. Or at least I think that's what Gerbert would say. My favorite ice cream is yummy and sweet. My favorite ice cream is a chocolate treat. My favorite ice cream is good to eat. Vanilla ice cream can't be beat. Your favorite ice cream is vanilla? That's impossible. Nobody's favorite ice cream is vanilla. I can like chocolate best if you want me to. Gerbert is hanging out with his best friend Melissa, but he longs to be one of the guys and hang out with these two rad dudes instead. Hatley's always up to no good, and whatever Hatley does, Max does, and they're always getting into trouble at school. Well, I've heard they're great. It's art time with Benny Brush. Hello out there, kids! It's art time! With me, your favorite host and paintbrush, Benny Brush! If you're familiar at all with my Gerbert VHS coverage, then you're really in for it today, because all three of the tapes that I'm talking about today are special issue tapes, and I've watched them thoroughly and come to the conclusion that the special issue in question goes by the name Benny Brush. Hey! Just the other day, I was working on an art project, and I didn't have a radio. See? And you need some mixed beans, or some rice, or some bird seed, or little pebbles, or some mixed beans. And then you can decorate it if you want to. I put ribbons on it, and I put decorations around it with some tape and some mixed beans. And if you just shake it like this, and you say, hey, mom. I can make music. She says, what are you doing with those beans in that bottle? He says, I'm a musician and I wrote a song. Benny seems to really fancy himself an arts and crafts guru, but his sole purpose really appears to be just to give children detailed instructions on how to drive their parents completely insane. I'm a musician and I wrote a song. Is I supposed to have a funnel for this? That's, that's probably enough. I'm a musician, I'm a musician and, and I wrote a song. Uh, my professional opinion is that you don't let your child make this unless you want to be horribly annoyed. That said, it's a pretty good cardio workout. Hey, hey, gotta go. This is your favorite paintbrush. Signing out, Benny. So the cool kids, Hadley and Max, are stealing apples, and they're doing it all smooth-like so that nobody, you know, nobody would know what they're up to. Do you think he's smart enough to let him in our little group? He's pretty young. He still looks kind of green to me. Well, I'm orange. Gerbert just happens to be at the wrong place at the wrong time, really, and gets mixed up in this whole apple-stealing scheme. But can he handle the pressure of lying about stealing it? No, no, of course not. Of course he can't. Gerbert's moral compass is just so intense that stealing an apple is basically the same thing as murder. All sins are equal to Gerbert. Wasn't that something, Max? Yeah, that was really something, Atlee. Gerbert, my little friend, you were great. He never even suspected you were stealing two of his best apples. Oh, well, I'm orange. Turns out that Hadley is actually the bad boy of the group, um, but he's actually really a sad boy because... His mom and dad are divorced. Oh. Are your parents divorced? I'm adopted. 
cool. Sometimes I wish I was adopted. But because of the success of the Apple heist, Gerbert finds himself with a couple of new friends. And before you know it, we're in space. Races to the stars and the speed. Spaceship look like a metal dick. Meanwhile, back on Earth, Gerbert and the cool kids are having some really cool pretend time. Look, a school of fish. I wonder what they learn about. Well, they probably learn about Finland. Get it, Finland? <laughs> well, boy. Uh, it's really fun and it's really easy if you just try it. I think something fishy is going on here. <laughs> Shit finally starts to hit the fan when Hadley takes notice of Melissa's new portable radio. Wow, where did you get that radio? That is really cool looking. Hadley comes up with the scheme for Gerbert to borrow the radio and then accidentally lose it uh, so that they can steal it. This is after Gerbert is serenaded by a chorus of young children, by the way. Oh, Jesus makes me feel so good, so happy. Things are kind of starting to get out of control. You can steal an apple, sure, but a radio? I mean, I think God's gonna have something to say about that. Oh, Rory, what am I gonna do? Rory doesn't give a shit. Don't go away, and we'll be right back. Time for Kid Bits. Okay, so along with our new friend, Benny Brush, these special issue tapes also feature comic segments called Kid Bits, which I refuse to research any further because I was worried about Googling Kid Bits and getting put on some type of pervert list. Wait, so Gerbert brings the sun out? Gerbert can, can bring... Gerbert controls the weather? What's the lesson here? So far, I'm really not down with the changes that they've made to the Gerbert formula in these special issue tapes. Benny Brush is a nuisance, and Kid Bits is just a waste of time, and honestly, really ugly. Not to crush the artist's hopes and dreams or whatever but you're shit. And where's my man Stu, huh? We traded Stu in for Benny, are you kidding me? I should have done this a long time ago. I'll just say Mr. Kaiser for you. Gerbert is determined to never do anything cool in his entire life. So instead of stealing a radio from a child who wronged him, he decides to confess uh, to his initial apple theft. I'm coming here to pay Mr. Kaiser for those two apples we stole. Fine. Which then inspires the cool kids to also confess to their Apple crimes. Um, Mr. Kaiser, sir, I need to apologize the most. I don't know how to say it, but... I'm a musician and I wrote a song! We'll be right back. Spaceships, cars. This episode actually also has another song at the end about a roller coaster, which you could argue is another type of vehicle. I'm not saying the songs aren't catchy. I'm just saying that it's weird to sing about cars all the time. If I was a child watching this tape, I'd, I'd be doing the exact same thing I'm doing right now, which is going, wah, wah, where's more Gerbert? But I mean, when you're forced to sit through a song about cars, followed up by a segment hosted by Benny Brush, sometimes it just feels like Gerbert might not ever show up again. Hello kids, welcome once again to Art Time with your favorite host and paintbrush, me, Benny Brush. I used to like to play like I was driving a car. You ever feel like that? Red, yellow, green, it's great fun. You go to your mom and you say, 
Hey, Mom, I need a shoebox. And she'll say, well, if your dad would buy me some new shoes, I'd have a shoebox. And you say, I got a cup. What does green mean? What does yellow mean? What does red mean? Gerber, Gerber, Ernst Gerber, are you in? Dreaming about the art evil again? Yeah. Why don't you ask your dad to make you one Jeff? like it? I bet he could. I'm adopted. Okay, so this next episode is about integrity or doing the right thing, which uh, should not be confused with the previous Hello, episode, friend. which was about peer pressure and overcoming evil by doing good. Clearly, completely and totally separate lessons. Gerbs really wants to buy an easel so that he can enter his Bob Ross phase, or uh, perhaps this is his Benny Brush phase. Either way, he doesn't have the cash for it. Twenty dollars? Whoa, does it come with paintings too? Once again, Gerbert's misdeeds take place at the local neighborhood Mr. Kaiser's store, and I don't get why Mr. Kaiser keeps putting up with these terrible children. They're awful customers, they steal from them, they don't have any money to buy easels. Why even let them in the, in the door? If they were me, I would just ban Gerbert from the shop altogether. No Gerbert allowed. Oh, Tyler, here comes your first customer. Six. Today, young Tyler is getting a shot at running the cash register in the store, and he mistakenly gives Gerbert too much in change. Which, I mean, of course he miscounted the change. The cash register is from like the 1500s. This kid is doing all the math in his head, and he honestly doesn't seem like a genius or anything. Ten dollars? Tyler must have given me too much change. I should take him back. Again. I mean, you can't keep the money, Gerbert. Like, there's no kind of mental gymnastics that you could do to really justify. It's a miracle. <laughs> it's a miracle. Unbelievable. Who would have ever thought it? See, we don't need songs about cars or choruses filled with children. Just let Gerbert sing. He's got pipes. It's a miracle. Good morning, madam. Oh, excuse me, sir. Have you seen Gerbert today? This episode features one of the oldest kids I've ever seen on the show. Like, they gotta get some younger characters in here because the audience is not gonna be able to relate to being this close to the grave. Oh, well, that could happen to anybody. That's what I told him. Obviously, Gerbert gets guilt-tripped and ends up confessing to his horrible misdeeds because that's kind of how every episode seems to end. He didn't really steal it, but I guess I kind of did. I need to take the ten dollars back to Mr. Kaiser and tell him fuck you, Mr. Kaiser. Uh, this one was actually really boring. I don't think this episode had a lot going for it, aside from Gerbert's catchy miracle song. Uh, there's just too many adults. What's with all the adults? Where's the kids like me? I'm children. I was kind of hoping that this last episode would be about divorce. I think that Gerbert's family going through a, you know, terrible divorce would just be a comedy goldmine. Before we start, I just want to show you this neat old postcard our friend sent us. It's from the country called Germany, home of... In this episode, Gerbert is clearly not friends with the cool kids anymore. Uh, he's hanging out with the rejects, Tyler and Patrick. Hey, I know. We can make paper hats and pretend stuff. Man, Gerbert sounds like a real snooze to hang out with, you know? I can't be the only one thinking this. Him and his friends are so boring, in fact, that he's got to get help from the grandma just to figure out something to do. Well, I have an idea. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you can start a newspaper. A newspaper would be too hard. Oh, you'd be surprised how easy and fun it'll be. Will you help us get started, Miss uh -huh. Kaiser? No. I think a newspaper is actually kind of a cool idea. You know, when I was younger, I definitely had a, a newspaper that I started. Or it was more like a newsletter. And... It's our oh, no. time with Benny no. Rush. No. Hey, hey, what do you say, kids? Do you like trees? I love trees. You know, 
When you're an artist like me, everything that God makes is trees, and especially trees. Do you remember the last time that you were climbing up in your tree and your daddy came by and he said, hey, you little tr well, Next time you say, okay, daddy. And you say, Benny, Benny, trees are hard to draw. I say, they're easy to draw. Just put your little arm down and use it as a guideline to make the tree trunk. just like that and then remember when you were two and you said i'm two i remember when i was two i was just a little bitty brush like this one right here do i remember when i was two when, when you i was were two? two i don't i don't remember when i was two making leaves on the trees and we draw around it again and then we color it in and if we don't have enough paint we just dip in and get some more, color all the leaves in, and it's a beautiful tree. I love to paint trees. So our project number two, number beans, pretty fun actually. I think that you would know that this was a tree, and if it were done by a small child, you might even be a little bit impressed. Hey, I can write a joke column. This man orders a bowl of soup at the restaurant. But before he starts to eat it, he notices a small fly in it. So he calls the waiter over to him to complain. Fla waiter, what's this fly doing in my soup? I can't understand a word this kid is saying. And look, this guy back here isn't even paying attention. Gerber will be the newspaper cartoonist, and why not you be the photographer and assistant editor? Why should I be the assistant editor? The two newspaper brothers begin fighting, and I mean, one of them I can't understand, and the other one is just kind of a boring nerd, so I don't know who I want to win this argument. I don't think I care. I wanted to be editor-in-chief the first time I even saw a newspaper. Well, I wanted to be editor-in-chief before I had even heard of newspapers. Even if this newspaper comes together, it's gonna be shit. I'm not gonna read it. Oh, we don't have to do a newspaper. We can make paper hats. Oh, Lori, I'm so sad. Oh, well, you know what pairs well with sadness? A song about the school bus. This has got to be like the director's kid or something, right? Why is he in here waving so much? He's always wa he's always waving. Stop looking at me like that. These special issue tapes feel so bloated with nonsense that it's ridiculous. It can feel like forever in between Gerbert segments, honestly. Like, just get to the Gerbs already, man. So you talked with Patrick? Who said anything about Patrick? I mean you and... I will have her own newspaper, Gerber. What? Well, I gotta go. This episode is sucks, man. The two friends are mad at each other, and then Gerbert gets upset and goes and cries in a tree. And then Old Bag comes along and gives him some advice. And listen, I know how this sounds, but I just think that old people are weird and shouldn't be on camera. I also think I think Jesus would agree. Do you really love Mr. Kaiser? Mm. Oh, well, like, what the fuck? God's a gentleman. He don't want to ever make you do it. He will always let you choose for yourself. Mm. <laughs> and while I'm rambling, what's up with the chorus of frumpily dressed children, huh? Literally nobody wants to see this except the kid's parents. Even God is like, could we not? I hate the old. I hate the young. I only live for Gerbert, my one true love. Mm. Because of the feud, Patrick and Tyler have decided to both start separate newspaper, but each of them want Gerbert to be their paper's cartoonist. You see, Gerbert has this really cool, hot new comic called Kid Bits. Time for Kid Bits. Up. 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 You probably want me to cut away from this, right? Uh, but, you know... I had to watch it. I feel like it's only fair to make you watch some of this too. 
very uncomfortable. It makes me very uncomfortable. Down. Okay, let's wrap this thing up, Gerbert. Bring us on home. What's our life lesson of the day? I don't feel like being his friend anymore, Gerbert. And I don't feel like being his. Well, that's okay. Real love isn't something you feel. It's something you choose to do. Real love is like a, like a raincoat. Friends, friends, wonderful friends. So everybody just, you know, chooses to love each other without a second thought. Real love is like a raincoat. Problem solved. These three VHS tapes were pretty gerb, uh, maybe a little bit boring though. I kind of wish Gerber would get up to some more shenanigans instead of just hanging around at home and talking to adults. Now come on down, Gerber. Let's have some milk and cookies. I think Gerbert should run away from home. You know, a, a Gerbert runs away from home episode. You you could make a full movie just based around that concept alone. Is that is that possible? Could that be a reality? Could we kickstart Gerbert the movie? Gerbert runs away from home and never ever comes back. And also, Benny Brush gets shot. I the following message is sponsored by HelloFresh. I can tell right now, just by looking at you, that you eat food. Don't ask me how I know, I just know. My love is like a raincoat. Do you have a packed schedule this fall? Well, HelloFresh has meals covered for you with a weekly selection of 30 plus recipes and 70 plus convenience items all delivered to your door. Did you know that in space, nobody can hear you scream about HelloFresh's line of picky, eater-proof, kid-friendly recipes for terrible children? HelloFresh doesn't deliver to space, but they do let you easily customize your meals by swapping out proteins and sides, or even letting you upgrade to fancy meats, which seems like a fair compromise. It's yummy, it's deliscos, it's HelloFresh. And you're gonna buy it using my promo code right now. I can just Go to HelloFresh.com and use code BRUTALMOOSE65 for 65% off and free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com, code BRUTALMOOSE65 for 65% off and free shipping. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better subscribe to HelloFresh or I'm gonna die. <laughs> That's just a silly joke. I'm gonna die no matter what you do. Yeah! It's a miracle.